U.S. President Joe Biden on Wednesday rolled out what will likely be a centerpiece of his re-election bid, Bidenomics. Bidenomics is working. When I took office, the pandemic was raging and our economy was reeling. Today, the U.S. has the highest economic growth rate leading the world economies since the pandemic, the highest in the world. Biden is betting that he can turn around Americans' lukewarm views on his economic stewardship, highlighting investments in infrastructure, semiconductors, and plans to expand high-speed internet. And I'm not here to declare victory on the economy. I'm here to say we have a plan that's turning things around incredibly quickly. We have more work to do. It's a gamble for the Democratic president. Job creation and low unemployment are the positives of Biden's first two years in office, while elevated inflation and the knock-on effects of spiking interest rates over the past year in areas such as the housing market have stoked fears of recession. But he's committed to winning over skeptics, and on Wednesday cited what he suggested was one example, Alabama Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville, who opposed Biden's $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure plan. People strenuously opposed voting against it when we had this going on. Well, there's a guy named Tuberville, from Alabama, Senator from Alabama, we now say he strongly opposed the legislation. Now he's hailing its passage. Here's what he said, quote, it's great to see Alabama receive critical funds to boost ongoing broadband efforts. Biden added that the next phase would include making the federal tax system fair by eliminating loopholes for the wealthy. Whether Biden's message Wednesday will break through is an open question. The summertime speech came ahead of the July 4th holiday, 16 months before voters head to the polls. And as Republicans sort through a large field of possible candidates led by former President Donald Trump, who has attacked Biden on inflation in the early months of the race. Angry protesters set cars ablaze and shot fireworks at French police on Wednesday in the working class Paris suburb of Nanterre. It was the second night of unrest following what President Emmanuel Macron called the inexcusable fatal shooting of a teenager during a traffic stop there. The shooting of the 17-year-old, who was of North African origin, has fueled long-running complaints of police brutality in the ethnically diverse suburbs of France's biggest cities. A police officer is being investigated for voluntary homicide for shooting the teen, whose name was given only as Nell. Prosecutors say he failed to comply with an order to stop his car, but a lawyer for the family referred to a video shared on social media that showed an officer shooting at the driver at close range, saying, quote, you can see that the shooting is not within the rules. Macron appealed for calm as he made the rare criticism of law enforcement after the shooting. Two leading police unions have fought back, saying the detained officer should be presumed innocent until found otherwise. A woman, identified as the victim's mother, has called on social media for a memorial march on Thursday in Nanterre, saying, we will lead a revolt for my son.